All right, we're a couple minutes past here, so why don't we just go ahead and jump into the agenda. I'm going to share my screen so everybody can have it conveniently for them. Give me just one moment on that. Hopefully you can hear me and see my screen. And with that, why don't we, all right, good. So why don't we go ahead and get started with the first topic, uh, Michael. I'll open up the PR as well, just for context. Yeah, morning. Um, yeah, this is an issue that's been floating around quite a bit as GitHub issues come up on um, you know, Slack. It's And even I noticed last week that um, project like uh, Hypershift is, is kind of coding around this issue by doing some questionable stuff. Basically, the issue is that um, importing a QCOW2 file via HTTP may be slow. And um, the reason for that is that we are converting from QCOW. So Kubert obviously uses raw images. And when we convert from HTTP, we are doing that, you know, in line. So QMU image convert can, um, work with HTTP images. And um, so we just call QMU convert directly by passing the URL. And that um, makes a bunch of HTTP requests to the server um, for doing a number of local range requests. Um, so if latency is high to the server, or this is like some mirror thing and there are, is a uh, you know, throttling going on on the server side, it can be quite slow because we just do a, a number of HTTP requests. Um, and the alternative is, in the, the, so the nice thing about doing the conversion inline is that it doesn't require scratch space. You can just create the target PVC and write directly to it. The alternative is to download the QCOW2 file um, to scratch space and then, can, then do the conversion um, from there. And in a lot of cases, that is faster to just stream down the image to the to a local um, scratch PVC and convert from there. Uh, so the question is, um, how do we want to deal with this? It seems like, um, do we make it uh, configurable to allow this, you know, where we'll download the entire file before doing the conversion? Um, or do we want to make that the default or 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 what? Because um, it seems that um, the performance issues are, are uh, you know, problematic for certain users. Yeah, because I mean, do we know what size uh, this image was? But because I can see that they're saying yeah, after 21 minutes, it's 32% completed. Yeah, if you scroll down, I did some testing. It took like basically um, uh, yeah, so it took like 10 minutes, you know, doing QMU convert directly, whereas you could download the file for four, in 40 seconds and then yeah. the conversion to um, raw is very fast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that Mike. seems like. Mike, just Go a ahead. question. Do we know if it's just for QCOW or it's only or also for RAW? Uh, no, uh, RAW is RAW is fast. I think that QMU uh, image handled like it, it just basically. I mean, the nice thing about QCOW is that you should have less. Uh, I mean, it should be smaller than RAW. Uh, so, in my opinion, it would be nice to do it. Uh, I mean, if we can configure it and uh, uh, add the scratch space, but the scratch space doesn't need to be the original size of the raw image. It needs to be uh, the QCOW uh, virtual size. No, I always forget. Anyway, in, in, usually QCOW images are smaller. So. Yeah, yeah, we could be... Um, right, so typically when we allocate scratch space, we... Um, created the same size as the target, but we could be, you know, maybe a little smart about it and make it a yeah. little smaller, the size of the QCOW2 file. 
Yeah. Have we found yeah. that it's typically reliable to get the the content length um, in most web servers? Like, is that going to be an issue? Uh, I I think uh, there will always be uh, edge cases. I think, yeah. And I, I guess if it's not if it's not giving us that answer, then we can default to the safe choice, but potentially optimize um, the, if we have. Yeah. So I have a question. Am I audible? Yep, we can hear you. Okay. Um, I'm wondering what is the original reason we were avoiding scratch base? It seems to me that in the past, when there were like statically provisioned PVs, that would have made significantly more sense. Was that the only reason, or did we have more? I mean, in the in the earliest of days, we never even had scratch space. Like, so the only way we could import was like in the very beginning was finding a way to use the um, the I/O the readers, like the reader stack in GoLang, to basically build a reader that could read directly into the PVC. That was the original design, and then I think we ran into cases where you you just frankly could not do that so then we had to introduce scratch space but we never revisited whether we should use that everywhere and i would say like just adding a bit of information here i have not noticed really any complaints with um the scratch space implementation like i haven't seen any kind of issues coming across where people would say you know, I don't have enough space in my cluster to import this because it needs scratch space, but I would have been okay if you could do it directly. Like that just doesn't seem to be a, a commonly encountered issue. So it seems like if scratch space is working well and people aren't bothered by the temporary increased storage requirements, it seems like a pretty, pretty much a no brainer to use it. Yeah, so I mean, I think the question is, the, does is it would that be the default, and do we still want to support this this way of doing it? Um, you know, how do and how do we specify the options if the, if there are options? <laughs> so we could we yeah. could just say, okay, forget about it. We always use Scratch Base from now on, and then nothing on the API changes, or we could um, change whatever the default is and and have some option to. Um, do it differently. Yeah, I mean, I definitely have an opinion here. Uh, maybe it's not the only one. I would say that more options equals harder to use the the uh, the software. So in general, we should just pick what we consider to be the right approach. I would say that if you need a workaround, like if Scratch Space is really an issue for you. You could, um, if you're in control of the, the file or you have a place to host it, you could host it in compressed raw format, which could still be uh, direct to PVC uh, without a performance penalty. Or you could create a container disk and use a registry import or something else uh, if you really were in a bind with this. But otherwise, it seems like it shouldn't affect people too, too badly. Any other opinions, though? I would just like to ask uh, about <laughs> how it how it works for. Um, so you mentioned HyperShift. HyperShift is does it pull from HTTP? How come they hit this uh, problem? Yeah, I mean they use data volumes, and uh, you know for for their. Uh, they're currently importing them via HTTP because they don't have, uh, you know, th this is probably it, 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 a temporary thing for now, but they don't have whatever images they're hosting. Uh, they need like some um, RHEL image or CentOS image, I forget which, in a registry, ideally, but it's not getting pushed there. So they are doing an HTTP import, but it's so slow that they're uh, importing it to like a cache volume and then doing, um, you know, data volume cloning from there. Um, mm -hmm. So they're implementing their own like caching mechanism, um, which, you know, it's not ideal, but it, it also is like, I think eventually it will be, um, uh, the image will be hosted in a registry. So they'll get, um, 
more efficient imports that way. Yeah, I was about to add, just wanted to make sure this issue will not pop up for uh, registries, right? Because it's yeah, they just don't, there just isn't the uh, um, automation or or whatever to 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 have the images that they want in a registry yet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and for and registry images are typically stored in QCOW too, but the way that those are imported, um, it gets pulled down to um, either into the local uh, like Docker image cache or like basically pulling a tar file down and extracting it to scratch space. So it wouldn't affect the the import side. So this seems like just a single case where you have a, a QCOW too. Um, or I guess it doesn't really make sense, but we technically support compressed QCOW too, but um, that one's probably already using um, scratch space, I would guess. Uh, yeah, I think anything that is uh, compressed will be downloaded to scratch space first. Unless it's compressed raw, right? A compressed QCOW will go will go to scratch space. Yeah. Okay. So this is a pretty um, it's a common a common file format, but a very specific scenario that we'd want to adjust potentially the default behavior. Yeah. Yeah. To me, it seems like a. I can't I can't see the real downside other than that temporary use of the scratch space, but the the speed up you're going to get from that is for me far eclipses the downside of that. Yeah, we're good at that, doing. Go ahead, Alex. Uh, I think that we have uh, lots of people doing registry imports, and uh, those are scratch space. So if nobody complained about this. Uh, I think it's fine. Like it, it backs up the claim that uh, scratch space is not so terrible. Okay. Uh, so I think what I mean, we can feel free to continue discussion, but I'm going to write a note down here that in general, the discussion was leading towards um, uh, changing the way that we do this to use uh, scratch space. Um, um, I need a completion. Um, uh, Um, all right so that added that um sounds like a, uh and it seems like this should be fairly easy to you know when we're kind of detecting what to do that we just say that we need we require scratch space um, so we have everything basically we need in CDI to do this fairly simply. Um, okay, so are we good on this topic? Should we move on to Alice's topic? Uh, sounds like that. So why don't you go ahead with your topic, Alice? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yep. Um, so I would like to make you aware about the um, design proposal that you open on Friday. Um, so this is um, basically describes the integration of a new project that um, rely on second, especially second notifiers. And as far as regards storage, um, that could help uh, solving uh, two issues. So one is the SCSI persistent reservation. Um, this is a topic I'm working since a while. Um, and uh, it doesn't really have a nice solution. So um, for those of you who are not aware about SCSI persistent reservation, I link uh, uh, some, some old uh, reference. So, but basically, 
the issue um, go down to let QAMU uh, talk into a privileged demon uh, through a unit socket. And this is really not uh, nice supported in a Kubernetes environment. Um, so I had uh, a first version that used by mounts, so basically by mounts, uh, the socket, um, the PRL per daemon socket to the virt launcher. Um, and this is something similar, um, how container disk work, for example, and also how it plug uh, volumes. Um, so at the end, uh, we would like to avoid by mounts because that has several issues, uh, cleanup issues. Um, so yeah, basically this uh, proposal could uh, fit nicely in these two use cases. So uh, it's pretty lengthy. Uh, we try to write down a lot of uh, security implication. Um, so yeah, if you have some time uh, and you have time to review it, uh, that would be great. <clears throat> Is there uh, any downsides that people should be considering other than maybe just that uh, additional dependency on a new project? Um, any other? Um, so um, basically we are using and relying on second uh, filter. Uh, this is something that maybe you have already um, heard uh, from Kubernetes um, or even Cryo, um, but second filter basically adds some additional latency in, uh, in every system call. Um, we ha actually have talked about this in the document, uh, but there is this uh, latency, uh, some additional latency. Mm, however, we have tried to minimize this uh, by building a, a smart filter um, and uh, the latency is propor logarithmic proportional to the number of the filter C score. Uh, but we consider that uh, this number should be pretty low. Um, you can see these, we have uh, outlined more details in the documents, um, but this is, I think, the more, uh, the most drawback. Uh, and the, the, the latency occurs in the control the plane side of, uh, of operations, right? It occurs in the kernel because basically it needs to go through all the syscalls that are filtered. Okay. Um, so, so there are some checks uh, that the kernel has to do for every Cisco execution. Okay. Okay, interesting. Yeah, that would be interesting to get like um like to be able to measure measure yeah. that at some point too, just to see really what we're looking with. Um, yeah, I mean, we that... we plan to do it. Um, it's uh, we are uh, still coding, uh, but at the end, I would like really to to try to some have some benchmark workload and see how long does uh, affect. Uh... So mm -hmm. it's something that we, we plan to do. Okay, sounds good. Does anybody else have any um, thoughts, comments, or questions? I think at this point, it's um, probably a fairly new topic to many of us. So um, the call or the ask here is to review the the proposal and become familiar with it um, if it's something that you'd like to weigh in on. All right, thanks for raising that. And I guess the next, what kind of what is the next step? I guess the next step would be to close on the design proposal. And you said that you were working on the the yeah. sort of the the base implementation so you'd be able to show like a proof of concept of this at some point as well yeah so um there is a link to the project um this is already a uh, proof of concept um there is also a, an example that points to one of my repository where i have implemented for scasi persistent reservation um so you could check it, but yeah, um, we we plan to do it in a more uh, in a more nice way. This is uh, some very basic. Uh, I have basic to say, I love 
I have to say that I love the uh, the the domain for this project. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's fun. So uh, it looks like some really good information on the project uh, here as well for people who want to dig in deeper. Yeah. Great. Okay. Um, any other thoughts or comments or questions on this topic? Awesome, thanks for raising it. Um, so I guess at this point we are, before we get to this uh, administrivia at the bottom, I think we're open for additional topics or questions or um, anything that anybody would like to bring up in addition. Anybody have a, a PR that needs attention or an issue that they wanna discuss or anything like that? I guess now would be a good time for that. Yeah, I don't see Andre on the call, but last meeting he brought up uh, Ceph deduplication alpha status and wind store. Um, yep, right here. Yeah, so uh, basically he, he recommended to uh, take that topic to the uh, Ceph um, mailing list or something. Uh, well, I talked to Niels about it, and yeah, he 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 did not know the status of um, deduplication and Seth. Um, he he seems to think that we don't uh, support it in downstream like OCS yet. So, um, mm. uh, okay, I don't think I don't think Andre's using OCS or, but yeah, he recommended just taking it to the. Um, Except mailing list, so I don't know. Okay. Um, did anybody have a chance to look uh, into Lynn store uh, in more details? I, I feel like maybe uh, someone may have, but I'm not sure. I think maybe Alexander did, but he's not on the call today. Um, <clears throat> so that's just kind of a reminder. It seems like a pretty cool project to uh, to look into as well. Okay, thanks for that, Michael. Um, I'm just trying to decide if we wanna capture any follow-up notes on that. Um, so I will write just, uh, oops. Add a discussion with a Seth developer and it seems that there, uh, I guess, I guess, and, He wasn't, I'm just trying to think of how to word this. Uh, he wasn't certain where we are with location. Um, this should be taken to the staff mailing list. Follow up. Oops. Okay. Um, right. Okay. Anybody else have another topic? And it's okay if we don't need to use all the time today. Um, what I, I'll um, jump in. Sorry, yeah. Sorry, Adam. Um, I am. I listed last time. Um, we have actually in Qvert, uh, when I mention, I mean Qvert, I mean really Qvert, Qvert, the um, core repo. Uh, mm -hmm. So we have a six storage label, but uh, we don't really use it. And uh, I don't know if this might facilitate to review certain PR. Okay. I'll mention that. Thanks for mention, for reminding us. Uh, we have a um, storage label uh, for PRs that can, I guess, for PRs or issues that can be used to um, attract the attention of this. Big. 
Feel free to use it. Okay. Yeah, that's a good note. Is that CCing people in storage or is, is it just a label now? Um, just to, because I think many of us don't, I mean, I, I, I'm watching the Kubernetes repository, but maybe it will be easier for the entire team to review PRs. Okay, just wondering. Because I feel like it can be automatically applied and even automatically ping people, but mm. I was wondering if you want to, if the request is to make it automatic. Um, I'm not sure. I really have lost a bit what we plan to do with this with this label. Uh, actually, I wanted also to ask uh, if you are aware about uh, those labels. I know that we have six storage, six network, six scale, or these kind of things, but uh, I don't have the impression they are really used. Yeah, there had been some discussion about that because we're definitely trying to um do some refactoring of code there's there's been a, an effort uh, over the long term to um yeah to try to organize the code in such a way that it's sort of clear um which uh, maintainers or which folks should review certain or be kind of in charge of certain bits of the code base um that's an ongoing thing at one point we had some plans to try to automate that um you know, kubevert wide, we're looking for ways to continue to scale the development process to make it easier and quicker for people to get the reviews they need. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure what the latest and greatest is on any of those um, processes or automation. But at least for now, I guess it can be used manually. And it looks like at least uh, Alice is, is looking for that label. And I guess, um, the rest of us, when we're looking for uh, to help out with uh, code reviews or to get directed at areas we might be an expert in, we can take a look at that label as well. Yeah, I think it will be helpful, especially uh, during community meeting on Wednesday, if we start labeling uh, maybe people that are not attending the meeting, mm -hmm. could just uh, search for the label, I don't know, at least. Uh, yeah, and that could, you know, that's a, it's a good point because this could be another, uh, another way for us to um, call attention to certain things in yeah. this meeting as well. Um, I know at the first, um, the first meeting, we, we tried to take a look at some of the outstanding uh, GitHub issues and things. And so if we could do that across uh, repos within the kubevert org um, yeah. by use of the SIG storage label, that might be a great way to uh, yeah. to keep a hold on that. All right. Um, anybody else have something they want to bring up? Um, hey, oh, uh, just hey. on that, um, on that subject, um, I don't think it's been approved yet, but as far as filtering release notes, when we come to that, um, usage of the SIG storage label will be really helpful to be able to group the storage um, PRs that have release notes together. Okay. Uh, use of... And yeah, if that can be automated, then even better. Awesome. Great. Okay. Um, so while other folks are pondering any other last minute additions they want to bring up, um, I wanted to propose that we cancel the next instance of this meeting, which would occur um, on the 2nd of January. I think a lot of folks are going to be out still from uh, from the end of year holidays and stuff. And, um, and even if they're not, I don't expect there to be a ton of topics um, as folks are getting back from that. So it seems to make sense. We could just uh, give everybody a, a little bit of email catch up time in, in lieu of that. And uh, we could reconvene then for the, the following meeting, which would be, I guess, on the uh, 16th. So unless there's any strong objections, I know that I won't actually be in the office that day to um, 
to moderate or to run the call. So. Okay, so there's no objections. So Andrew, if you could help with that, that would be great. Yep, I can send out a message saying it's canceled and the next one will be on the 16th. Sounds great. All right, um, so with that, I guess we can uh, give folks a few extra minutes back on uh, their schedule today. And I uh, just wanted to thank everybody for joining. Um, I really enjoy the uh, discussions that we're having here. So I um, hope everyone has a good um, holiday season and we'll catch you guys back in about a month's time. Thank you. Have a great day. Thanks, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. Thank you. bye, -bye.